It is the end of an era. This is the home where I really started to do YouTube full time. Today we are saying goodbye, but I wanted to take a walk back on all of the things that we've done so you can see what it looked like and see where it is now. And there's one thing that I've done to this home that I wanted to do the entire time I lived there that we did after we moved out. And I'm gonna share that with you in just a second. But first, let's take a look back on what I did on the outside of the house. It's just so gross. It's like dead skin, it's like peeling it off. It's kind of gross, but you have to do it. <laughs> well, we're gonna fix this. From the research that I've done, it looks like there might have been like some moisture issues, but the rest of our house looks amazing. The paint's holding up fantastic. What I've decided to do is we are getting a brand new door. I called in a professional. Before he gets here, we need to go in and paint it. I just wanted to play it safe. I'm gonna paint it indoors. I've got everything taped off, including the glass that will be in our brand new door. Isn't this gonna be pretty though? So then I took a trip and got some Sherwin-Williams paint at Lowe's, one coat of this, and the door is ready to be installed. While he's installing the front door, we're gonna head up to my studio. We're gonna work on some DIYs to make this front porch really special and really inviting. Next, we are going to be making a welcome sign for just left of the door. Then I write welcome and then to the, and then I made the to the smaller. And then when we are happy with the overall look of the sign, and we are gonna cut this out on my Cricut Maker in wood. Then once we have everything cut out, take it outside and spray paint it in a glossy black spray paint and now it's time to build something to put it on. We are going to cut this down to 24 by 36 inches. I'm just going to use this one by three for my scrap pile and then we're going to miter the frame. Before we install the frame, I just take some white spray on primer and do two coats with that. Then I use some antiquing wax on the frame and let that dry. Then we lay out our lettering as we did in Design Studio. We go ahead and use Gorilla Clear Gel Glue. After that dries, we're going to add some wood glue to our frame and nail it into place. Finally, we add a D-ring hook to hang it on. My new front door is in. I love it. It is so beautiful. Now to address this window. I love the light that it's bringing into the inside and also the detail that it brings to the outside. I love this door, but we like our privacy. So up top, I had frosted that and I used like a spray on frosting, but I'm not convinced that I want permanent frosting on this window, but I've got a really fun hack that uses contact paper to kind of disguise and filter the light, but without the permanent feature to it. So to do this, just cut out your $1 contact paper, just a little bit larger than the window pane, lightly mist with a water bottle, and then stick your contact paper to the window and smooth it out using some kind of flat scraping tool. Then you're gonna take a razor blade and cut off the excess as close to the edge as possible. It does give a nice, beautiful frosted look without the long-term commitment and the heavy price tag. When we bought this house, there are no light fixtures here. Well, it's wired for it. I see the, the electrical spots for it on either side. We are gonna add some new lighting on either side of my garage door. They have a sensor that automatically turn them on at night and turn them off at dawn. Now we decided to upgrade to a Google Nest doorbell device, but you don't have to spend that much on a doorbell to make it look much more finished. Now it's time for all of the finishing touches. I'm so excited, this is gonna be great.
Okay, so some of my favorite projects start right here in the entryway. I am sitting in a like a mudroom locker room area right in our entryway. We didn't have a formal mudroom. There was no room for that, but we had this big open space and I knew we needed a closet. So this is an Ikea, I believe pack system closet that I put in. This that I'm sitting on was a bench. Well, <laughs> it was a bench, but it actually started out life as a TV stand. But we converted this into the bench area because it was just the right size, just the right depth for what I was looking for. And I already had it on hand. So an Ikea closet, a repurposed TV stand, and then some lumber to create this really cool locker. So let's take a quick look back at that project. This is the area that we are going to address. Let's get started by clearing all of this out and then we're going to start building our PAX closet. could see my side and how it feels to hit the ground Don't want it to be loved You should have never let me go Standing by yourself, no one to hold This is the plan. We're gonna go ahead and build up the shelves, this upper portion shelf for up here, and then we'll start assembling and making this all permanent. But let's get at it. There's the basic frame of our box up top and I think it's gonna look amazing. Okay, so with our box built, we just need to find some studs that we can hang it on in the wall. We need to make sure that they go into studs so it's nice and sturdy. Let's do it. So I went ahead and removed the side trim piece here so that it could sit up flush next to our cabinet and then I took just a jigsaw and cut off that miter edge so it was nice and snug. Well, I felt like we had a little bit of room to add another little shelf right here um, about eight inches down so we, it will still be pretty tall. I've got one longer piece for a side panel to really enclose this locker system that we we're building. Then we're going to go about doing our um, ship lap right here. Let's build this shelf. Okay, so we've got this top part built and we are gonna attach the bottom here now and make sure everything's nice and square. Somebody ought to come on how it feels to hit the ground. How can you say that nothing's different that we should pick up the So we got all of our shelves in. We pocket hold the side panel into the top of our bench. So this is all nice and sturdy. I also reinforced this um, seam with some screws and it just is all nice and tight. Now we're gonna start our ship lap section. This is making good progress. It's been a lot of work, but it's it's gonna be good. We all make mistakes and wasn't ready to let you go yet. And now you're standing at my door thinking We're gonna cover that up with some trim, hide and disguise that. OK, 
Okay, the last bit of trim that we're gonna do before we do all the caulking and the putting and all of that is I actually am going to cheat crown molding by using some door casing upside down and it's gonna give it the nice finished look that we're going for. And so we'll install that now. As we hold each other So we are ready to paint. As you can see, I've taped everything off that doesn't need to be painted. So yeah, let's get painting. I got out my spray gun and spray painted it. And I've come out here to say that I love you. Maybe the birds will sing about your heart. Maybe the trees will whisper the word. Okay, so we're still in the entryway here and this was also one of my favorite projects and that was the newel post that we did. All we did is wrap around the existing newel post and it took this area from builder grade to custom. It looks beautiful. I was so happy and thrilled with this project and you can see that it also accompanies our batten board wall here in the entryway as well. That was a fun project. Now when I first moved in I initially just wanted to do something fun so I did like this ECOT uh, chevron pattern with a stencil and it, it was very busy I got tired of it very quickly and so I really love this white wall paneling you'll see that idea kind of repeat itself throughout the house and so let's take a quick peek back at that project. I really want to upgrade this builder grade newel post. It's tired, it's ready for a makeover, and it's not very substantial. So basically what we're gonna do is just wrap our new newel post around this existing one. I actually think it will make things more secure, but it will make it a little bit easier. There will be some tricky spots around this handrail here, but I've got a tool that will hopefully help us out with that. So let's get started on the newel post. Okay, so here's the tricky part. It has some scalloping and all of that. I've put a piece cut on an angle right underneath it, and then we're gonna just piece together. So I have this tool right here. We are going to push it in and hold it up against this, and then we're gonna just make sure we get this as snug as possible. Push that, that locks it into place, and then we have the scalloped edge and this is how we need to cut our piece here. We'll make sure that it's on an angle and it matches up with this and then we'll jigsaw this out. Just wrapping that post right inside, it's gonna be great. Basically, we first wrapped the pole, then we did a wrap to stair step it out, and then we did a third wrap to stair step it out. So then we are going to just put these in here, and they'll be at a 90 degree, as you can see, and we will nail this into place. And then the only thing we have left to do after we get all of these into place is put on a cap on top of this. I'm gonna be someone else. Now it's just time to caulk and putty. That's the most important part to make it look really good. So I literally just finished this newel post, which is a scaled down version of the one at the bottom of the stairs. You need to make sure that you do a really good job at puttying and then sanding down all the putty and then make sure you caulk every little seam so that when we go to paint it, it will look nice and pristine. So we're, we're almost there. <laughs> We have worked so hard for this amazing transformation. I cannot wait to share with you the final result. Let's go inside. 
in our little half bath that's really kind of right off of the entryway and this was such a fun project. I think it might be my most viewed room makeover in the home and it's just a small little bath area. So one of the things that we did to really boost the character in this room is we added this faux brick wall. It looks really, really nice. It was very affordable to do, very easy to do. I think in my new home, I'm gonna be experimenting with real brick because Benji Nelson taught me how to do real brick and I cannot wait to get my hands on some real stone this time around but this was a really good place to start with just the the panel sheets now you'll remember I replaced the vanity I replaced the toilet I did all of it myself and we also did a new light fixture it's looking a little empty in here now but it still has a lot of character I love this so let's take a quick peek back at that so let's start with the toilet <laughs> We're ready to remove this toilet. Rock it back and forth is what I've been told and then lift it off. This toilet paper holder was way too far away from the toilet, especially if you have kids. Honestly, I was completely expecting this. We're gonna take this piece of scrap wood. Okay. We're gonna just place this in here. This is just a patch that we are gonna place over the top. And then we will fill this in with some joint compound. Once it's dry, we sand it to smooth. You can just get a can of orange peel texture and just spray it on and let that dry. So we have three cracked tiles and they're right in the middle. And I would love nothing more than to just throw a rug over them and forget about it. But I'd always know that I renovated my bathroom. And then I back butter three tiles that we are going to be placing into the space with my trowel and place them where I want them. So we're gonna paint three of the walls, but this one wall behind where the toilet and the sink will go, I've got something fun planned for there. Now I'm gonna be painting my walls in a Revere Pewter, which is a grayish color that's in the rest of my house. I already had it on hand, so it didn't cost me any additional money. I don't use painter's tape. I find that it takes a lot longer. You can see that I've turned off the lights in here, and that's because we are about to remove the old light fixture, and that's because we are gonna be installing a faux brick wall. We're gonna remove the light fixture and then we're gonna make it safe for us to work. We'll just probably leave the power off on that. I got my brick paneling at the Home Depot because I feel like their wall panel looks a little bit more realistic. I got two sheets and then I went ahead and had Home Depot make one of my long cuts for me. Now it's time to install my brick paneling on my wall. So I decided to go ahead and grout my tile. Then we can just take it outside and spray paint the underside first in a matte black spray paint. Then we're gonna flip it back over and do a couple of coats of that same matte black. This sign turned out so cool. So we've got the light installed and how about those light bulbs? Are they not the coolest? So I'm super excited about how this is looking so far. I pulled out my vanity from the wall and installed the faucet prior to installing the rest of it. And once we got all the plumbing situated, I screwed the cabinet into the wall. Then we so easily hang our fresh and clean typography sign. Thank you for your patience. 
station. Now it's time to show you the bathroom. I am so thrilled with how this bathroom turned out. It's amazing. From being the most boring room in the house to now probably one of the most interesting, it's been quite a transformation. So here is the treaded laundry room. It's empty. I don't really do anything to it. It needs some patches and some paint in there, so I'm not gonna even bother to show you. It's like literally the most boring thing. I promise you there is a laundry makeover in my horizon over at my new Heritage house. I'm super excited to do it, but that was one that just never made it. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. So this is the heart of the home and we did a lot of fun projects here in the kitchen from adding the backsplash, which I always loved. It was a little bit controversial. Some people did not like, I absolutely loved it. And it helped me to like the countertops a little bit more. They were very gold. Um, and I didn't ever truly, truly love them. It's just not something that I would have picked myself if I were starting from scratch, but it is what it is. And adding that backsplash really helped me to love the space a lot more. I also added new hardware, but I didn't do a ton in the kitchen and I would have done more. Like I really love a white kitchen and a white kitchen cabinet. I just think it's timeless and classic, but we never painted it. And that is because we had always intended on this being some sort of rental property for us and maintaining painted cabinets. Maybe they would hold up great. Maybe they wouldn't, but maintaining cabinets on a rental house with paint was just not something that I was interested in doing. And so they stayed this dark ebony color and it looks good and very on trend right now. <laughs> so Let's take a quick peek back at what I did in the kitchen. The first thing that we did is paint the walls. I didn't love the color. It was kind of a butter yellow, which I just didn't really love. And I went with Revere Pewter on the wall. One thing you can really do to upgrade a kitchen and make it feel a little bit more polished is adding a backsplash. I wanted to bring the brightness of a white kitchen in. So I knew I wanted to do a white tile somehow. And then I came across this tile, which is this kind of arabesque tile with a bronzy or a gold tone to it. It's such a pretty tile. I start out by removing the six inch granite backsplash that was existing. Then we remove any remaining residue on the counters with a flat edge blade. So I patch the walls. I let it dry overnight so it's nice and sturdy. Then I sanded it down to smooth it out. Then we unscrewed all of the outlets and making sure that there was no power to them. Working with a wet saw is not as scary as you think. We just make all of our cuts. Then we applied our tile to the wall using the white mastic. Once your tile is installed, you let that sit up for about 24 hours and then you go back and grout, making sure to clean all of the excess off. And when it's dry, there will be a little bit of a haze. You go back and polish the tiles with a little window cleaner. This tile really dressed up the kitchen and took it from builder grade to gourmet. Now, right across from the kitchen, I have this big wall that I added some batten board trim and molding on. I started by removing the baseboards and outlet covers. Then I covered the entire wall in masonite. Once I had the walls covered in the masonite, my goal is to cover up most of the seams with a board and batten. Then I place all of my molding in the pattern that I had predetermined and used a nail gun to make quick work of it. Then you're going to fill in any nail holes, sand them out smooth, and caulk all of the seams to make sure they are nice and tight. Then all it needed was some prime and paint. I just love this and it really ups the ante a lot. And hiring out trim and molding can be very expensive, but adding trim and molding really can add a more luxurious feel, more high-end feel. And we did this for hardly anything. After time and kids and cooking and all of those kinds of things, my cabinets started to look really grody, really disgusting, really beat up. So I decided to do a cabinet refresh instead, which was really a deep cleaning of the cabinets with a special brush that worked 
amazing. Before you start, you need to remove all your hardware first. Now, after you do this thorough scrubbing, I used a cabinet cream to seal and renew the shine of the cabinets. And I wiped that on with a microfiber cloth. I also took the opportunity to add new brass hardware to the cabinets, giving it a more contemporary upgraded feel. The transformation was stunning. They actually ended up looking even better than when we bought the place. I am so glad that I did this. Now it's time to decorate and do the fun stuff. So next up, we're gonna decorate our kitchen with aesthetics in mind and functionality. Sometimes when you are decorating in a small space, you don't have a lot of cabinet room, and besides, you use a lot of these things all the time anyways. Rather than peppering them across the counter, you get a cute little bin basket, or you can use a wood box like I've done here, and you put them all in one location, and then you put it real close to where you're cooking so it's convenient for you, and it's all there, ready to go, and it looks a little less chaotic, so that's why I like that. In the meantime, I am really happy with my end result here. I think it's beautiful. I think it's classy and timeless, modern and contemporary, functional and aesthetic, and you can't go wrong. Okay, this is looking very empty and probably very different than what you are used to seeing. This is the dining room, and it was really always more of a, like a breakfast nook. There was no formal dining room in this area. We do have a formal dining room in our our new home, I'm very excited about that. But we did some fun projects in here, so let's take a quick peek back on making over the dining room. First, what we're gonna do is just start clearing it out and getting kind of a blank canvas. So let's start by clearing it all out. Right, so I've got a licensed electrician here and we are going to switch out this light fixture and then we're going to add two really beautiful pendant lights over the bar. I'm so excited. I'll let them get to work. So we got our light fixtures installed and they are so pretty. I love the way they look. And then I decided that this chandelier needed to be kind of on a dimmer. So I went over and I switched out the light switch to just a dimming switch. So now it's time to move kind of onto some of the bigger scale items in the room furniture. I got rid of the mission style lightweight console that has been here since we purchased the home. I didn't pick it out. It's not my style. On this side of the room, that is where my fireplace wall is with all the built-in bookcases but now we've got a lot of weight on this side of the room and no weight on this side of the room so we're a little out of balance and we kind of need to balance it back out so my idea for that is to find a china hutch for this wall I really have my eye on one by Ethan Allen that is beautiful and also close to seven thousand dollars which is totally out of the budget I'm not spending seven thousand dollars on a china hutch so what I've decided to do is try to find one through thrifting. What a score was this? 80 bucks at the Goodwill Superstore in Lakeland. Yeah. So the one thing about this China Hutch is it didn't come with shelves and then also it's missing a couple of pieces of hardware, but we will get this looking brand spanking new. It will still be a, just an awesome deal. I'm really excited about it. That was super dirty. That took me about an hour to clean it very thoroughly. I used a mixture of soap and water and a little bit of vinegar. And then I don't know if you can notice right here, but there's a little piece of trim missing there. And we are going to use some of that same molding and patch that up. So hopefully you can't tell um, once it's all painted up. It's that time. We're gonna start on the inside. Let's paint. I'm really 
happy with the finish of the hutch. What we're gonna do is scrape it all clean, get the edges cleaned up. We're gonna, going to install the shelves. I'm excited with how it's turning out. Let's finish it up. To finish out our hutch, I attached all the hardware. Some of it's the original, some of it's the old. I took some gold leaf rub and buff and kind of touched up all of the hardware, especially where we had maybe gotten some paint on it. In the end, I absolutely am thrilled with how it looks. All right, we have worked so hard. It's time to reveal my dining room makeover. Let me show you. Before we move on to the living room, which is probably my most proud room in the house, we'll say. I wanted to take a quick peek back at what we did out here on the back patio pool area that also doubled as my workshop for a long time because I didn't have a space for me to do that. And so I do in my new house, I'm very excited about that. But let's take a quick peek back on what this looked like. I'm not quite sure where to begin because it is such a disaster. My neighbors have been really cool. I know that they are probably gonna be more excited than even me, which is hard to believe that we get this makeover done. <laughs> Nobody's reported me to the HOA, which is pretty much a miracle. <laughs> so what I've decided to do is start over in the corner. I'm going to build like an outdoor armoire, like storage unit to hold kind of some of the stuff that I'm gonna need to keep somewhere. And then we're gonna need to do like a massive clearing out because there is so much stuff. I just got this in the outdoor section at Target. I think it was meant to be like a little end table upside down, but we are gonna flip it up and put our little smaller pieces of wood scrap in here and clean this up. It's morning of day three of our makeover. We are going to be installing a movie screen behind the pool. And I was having a really hard time finding a black movie screen. So I found one that's white. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint the exterior of that. Now it's time to finish constructing our boxwood wall and I start by bracing my plywood sheet up against the wall where I want it to be. Wow, did we work hard. I've got scratches, I've got cuts, I've got bruises, but it was all worth it in the end. And now it's time to reveal my back patio. Let's go check it out.
This project right here, this wall, is what really took this whole main floor area and elevated it from like just a builder grade house to something that is truly custom. This project I am so proud of because it really stretched me. It really stretched my skills and it gave me a lot of confidence. I never thought that I could have built a whole fireplace wall with cabinetry and shelves and lights and it's beautiful, I love it. Okay, so this is a little bit like farmhouse, and so we're not gonna be really taking that direction into the new house, but because I did this project, it has given me the confidence that I need to do some of the plans that I have for the new home. And I'm gonna be going over some of those plans coming up real soon. Either It's either next week or the week after, but it's coming soon. I'm gonna go into lots of details of some of the things that I'm gonna be doing in that home. So let's take a quick look back at all we accomplished in this family room space. We're gonna just go ahead and clear out all of this out of the way. We are gonna remove the baseboards right on the back side. We're gonna cut through our grout line. I'm trying to visualize where the mantle height would be. So this blue tape line is the height of my mantle. So now we're gonna just make sure that it's center. So we want to know like where our bump out is gonna be. The width of my wall and mantle and all of that is gonna be 72 inches. So we'll take six feet off. There will be five feet on either side of me. Now that we've got kind of an idea of where our fireplace is going, I've gone ahead and marked where all of the studs are located because the outsides of our fireplace do not directly align with a stud. We want it to be secure, we want it to be sound, and so in order to do that, we need to get it attached to studs somehow. I'm gonna hang these on the wall horizontally, making sure that it is into the studs and I'm gonna do several floor to ceiling between four and six, something that is attached to a stud. I like it. All right, now we're gonna make sure it's level and hit another stud right there. There we go. Okay, so now we've got all of these cross supports in. They're very sturdy, they're not budging, they're golden. So we're gonna build the hearth area right now. So we're just gonna measure the space between here and here, 29 and an eighth. And then we need the total height to be 11 and a quarter. I put in a brace here so it had something up against it behind it. bust out like the side framing here. I'm gonna do that first before I do the face framing. So before I started cutting or building anything, I made sure to account for my electric fireplace insert measurements, giving a little bit of leeway on all the sides, but still allowing for a snug fit. So you will see that opening. Then I built the top section, which was much simpler in design and basically studs evenly spaced out. And I nailed that into the bottom piece and into the ceiling and into the side walls. Then our framing was complete. So instead of going with tile, I've decided to use faux brick and I think it's gonna work out great. I'm gonna add decorative trim and it's really gonna start taking shape here really soon. All right, so we have finished trimming everything. One last element that we need to get in 
and that's the fireplace. And we're gonna just plug it in in the outlet that was already there and we're golden. In the end, I have exactly what I want. We ended up spending just under $900 total for everything. So it's totally worth it. Fireplace build was a little intimidating to me at first. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm really happy with the money saved. But now I want to do built-ins on either side. I got some stock cabinetry from my home improvement store. We're gonna install that. These are actually upper cabinets, but we are gonna convert them into lower cabinets. Before we can put our base frame in here, I do need to remove part of this trim molding. We don't wanna remove the whole entire piece, just the area that we're gonna be putting our base in. Now we're gonna build the frame, and I've got some just regular two by fours. And so we'll just measure and make a bunch of cuts, and then we'll go inside and use our nail gun to put it all together. <laughs> So now we've made our cuts and we are ready to start assembling our base. So we are just gonna build this frame out. Before we can install our cabinets, we need to do a little bit more prep work. So we're gonna be installing some one by twos. So I marked where some studs are and then I'm gonna be just making some other marks with a level for convenience purposes. Okay, so we've got this all prepped and ready for our cabinets. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide them into place now. Okay, so we've got these kind of dry fit in here. We have not attached it to anything. Then once the hole is cut, we can replace the cabinets and install them permanently. get ready to do paint prep we still need to do the shelves even though our shelves will be stained we need to get them ready to go prior to paint and that's because we're going to be adding some trim i start by installing our support bracket where we originally marked making sure that i nail it into the studs and also that it's still level then i just slide our shelf on and it fits perfectly then remove the shelves and prepare for paint i prime just the countertop area because everything else is already primed. Do not skip this step, seriously. It really does make the difference in the overall finished look of your project. So take your time doing this and do a good job. While that's drying, I use a gel stain in the color Kona and stain our shelves, and then I do a coat of polyurethane. We are going to install our shelves, and I'm excited about that because I am so ready for this project to be done. Now, once the shelves are dry, I slide on the shelves and put multiple finish nails in every area that we had one of those bracket arm pieces. Then there's just a little cleanup and reinstalling the cabinet doors, which I also sprayed to match the same colors, everything. That was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun and so rewarding. Now, I just wanna emphasize that I am not like a finished carpenter by any means. I cannot believe that we built these, to be honest with you, and I'm thrilled. It is just so rewarding to be able to do something like this, saving thousands and thousands of dollars, and I am just totally excited about the end result and pretty proud of myself. And the first thing we're gonna start with 
is the ceiling fan. It just doesn't match anything else going on in the area now. So I've got an electrician coming over right now. He's going to install it. I do do my own electrical sometimes, but with ceiling fans, I just let somebody else do the work, make sure it's nice and balanced. So sometimes it's just better to leave it to the professionals. How amazing is this ceiling fan? It's beautiful. I love it. Okay, so I've really loved this little table. It's really cute, but I really hate my dog crate that's over on the other side of the room, just kind of floating and being so noticeable. So what I'm gonna do is I have a different home for this, but we're gonna take this out and then we're gonna go outside and build something to go around my dog crate so it doesn't look so much like a dog crate. On to bigger and better things. So this is going to kind of give you a rough idea of the layout of it. So this is the front. So there's still a way for her to get in and out. With our carpet down, it's time to get the fun stuff, the decorating, of course. So the thing that I'm trying to keep in mind as I accessorize here is I felt like I had too much going on with my last look. I felt like there was just too many like tchotchkes and things that just made it look busy. So I'm trying to edit it down, keep it a little bit more simplistic. So like in this case, just one thing on this shelf and that's it. Let's see if she likes her crate. All right, what do you think? Oh yeah, do you like it? <laughs> yeah, you do. All right, just a few finishing touches and we will complete the look. didn't see a lot of this room. I had the grandest of intentions to do something fun with this room and I just never quite got to it. But you did see one quick episode of me doing this really fun wall mural for my guest bedroom that's on the main floor. Since then, I did switch out one thing in here, but I'm not gonna show you it yet. I'm gonna show it to you in just a second. We switched out the carpet in the entire house. It's something that I wanted to do from day one, but we bought it furnished and the furniture was already in it. And once you get stuff in there, it's very hard to do. That's why it was so important for me to do some of the flooring over at the new house before we moved in, because I knew once we were in, it was not gonna happen just like it did here. Uh, let me know if you can relate to that. So there is new carpeting throughout the house. I'm gonna show you when we get to the stairs. 
cabinets. We've got buttercream walls, white furniture that's got no interest going on, and we are going to change that today. We are going to be painting the walls a dramatic color. I've got an awesome wallpaper mural that we're going to install on this wall that's going to really pack a punch. One thing that I always do when I go to the home improvement store is I always check the oops paint section. Now oops paint is just like accident paint. It's mist tints for other customers. This time I picked up this really pretty olive green color. Now at the time I bought it, I had not selected my wallpaper mural and I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek of it now. But there were all these different various shades of green in it. It actually matches our wallpaper mural perfectly. So we're gonna put this nice dramatic olive green on the walls before we hang our mural. So our wall paint is dried and now we are going to be applying a wall mural that I am so excited about. It is so pretty. It's called the Hummingbird Garden. So the first thing you wanna do is start out with a clean and dry wall. And so I've already taken care of that. We're actually gonna start the wall mural on this corner because it's the first thing you see coming in will be this corner. So let's get hanging this. I'm just gonna take this wallpaper roll and shove it up against the wall. We're gonna make a little mark here. Make sure that it's level. And now it's time to get some wallpaper paste on the wall. My plan is just to roll it on and then stick the wallpaper on. So this will be interesting. And I'm hoping that this is actually kind of better because then not everything is so wet. <laughs> so we'll see. On the instructions, it says to use a thin layer of wallpaper paste. This wallpaper is a little bit heavier, so I definitely would say I'd put on a nice thick layer of wallpaper paste. If there's excess, it will kind of squeeze out the sides and you can just remove it. You're going to want to use the smoothing tool and the straight edge blade to make any necessary cuts and it's really not that hard to do at all. <laughs> As you can see it's too short. Now, normally on a regular wall, I probably wouldn't have done this, but on this wall, we've got a king size bed. We're gonna have some bigger nightstands. We're gonna have drapes. So you're really not gonna notice this bottom half because it's gonna be mostly covered. So my solution for this is I got a little piece of trim here and it's a pretty small little piece of trim. And we are just going to install this and then paint everything below it white. I'm I'm holding it up and because this is so thin I'm not going to need a saw or anything I'm just going to use some clippers here and clip it to the size so I've got my mark right here and we are just going to cut through but there we go this trim is so lightweight, it really doesn't need much to hold it up. So I just took an electric staple gun that I could put tiny little brad nails into and just popped those into the trim. Then I filled in the nails holes and got a small paintbrush because I wanted to be very careful near the wallpaper and a foam roller and filled everything in in between. I'm so thrilled with how this bedroom turned out. In fact, I said to my husband, I think we're moving our master bedroom downstairs now. My wallpaper mural ended up costing around $150, including all of the extra supplies. But for the added impact in the room, I really think that that is a good deal, especially considering that there is probably no need for any kind of art or focal point over the bed because you just really don't need it. Okay, so here's the new carpet. Isn't that so beautiful? I just love this. It's so pretty. Okay, and so here is what the carpet looks like at the top of the stairs. 
I just think it's really cool. This is a quick peek at the bathroom here. I never really did anything in here as well, so um, it was fine. Just at the top of our stairs was an open family room area that I used as my craft room and studio. Many of you will recognize the stripes behind me and to the side of me. I don't know if they're gonna be staying or not. I am still in the process of debating whether or not to paint over those or not. I'm kind of leaning in that direction just to kind of neutralize it. We are planning on renting this out long-term and I don't know, do you think people would like that or not? But one of the fun projects that we did in this room, and this was my first taste of doing built-in bookcases and I did this actually prior to doing the one downstairs and this was functional for me and they're just very simple to do the very basic bookcases and shelves if we had stayed a little bit longer I had thought about maybe putting doors on the lower part of it but we didn't get to that so I'm just gonna leave it as is I think it's really good it's really nice so let's take a quick look back at what this used to look like first off I wanted to show you where this room began as a very boring Boring vanilla room with a bunch of inherited furniture that I probably would have never bought unless it hadn't already come with the purchase of our home. There were very vanilla walls, cheap end tables, a fake leather sofa that looked good from a distance, but when you got close you could see that it was really cracked and peeling all over the place. I started out by selecting an inspiration piece that would determine the direction that we took the color palette in. But the first real project I tackled was the walls. So I started out by doing my token striped wall. And with just a few cans of paint, it went from boring to totally beautiful. Next up, I sold my fake leather sofa and it more than covered my craft table. Then I picked up some supplies at Home Depot where I built a simple tabletop and then painted everything out that needed it. Next up, I wanted to have my logo on my wall since this will be used to shoot my weekly show letters. I took the original poster board that I had cut out as a template on my Cricut machine and spray painted it gold. I then used spray mount adhesive to glue them right onto the fronts of the styrofoam letters. This room has really become a huge catch-all and dumping ground, so I knew I needed to add some storage shelves. I start by going to the Home Depot and purchasing some MDF, which I have them make all of my major cuts there. Then I mark where I want each shelf on all sides so I know exactly where to tack it in with some nails. prime and paint it out. Now it's time to decorate my favorite part. up this $8 basket on clearance at Home Goods, and I thought that it was a perfect basket to store odds and ends that weren't very attractive and I could just hide it away. So I got these jars on sale at Hobby Lobby. I think they're perfect for storing things in them. I don't have anything for them yet, but I'm going to set them in here for when I need them. And they're so pretty, I like them. This room 
was me like taking a test on something daring. As you can tell, the wall is black with kind of a vertical faux shiplap look. And I really like this. This was for my son's bedroom and it was me doing something kind of bold and dramatic for him. So let's take a look back at what we did in this room. We are gonna be making over this very boring and vanilla bedroom. <laughs> Give it some personality, some drama, and all of that good stuff. But first, we've gotta start by deconstructing the room and then we're gonna get on with painting. Okay, so now is a good time to talk about my design plan. On this back accent wall over here, what I am wanting to do is a drama statement. We are gonna be doing a faux shiplap vertically. It's kind of a different palette, but it will all come together, I promise you. And then it's just liquid nail on the back and then I use my brad nailer to nail it into place. Okay, so the last little strip we need to cut is for right here. And then we will caulk and putty all of the holes and make sure everything is nice and sealed. And then we'll paint because it's already primed so it will be easy peasy. We've got everything caulked, and it's time to paint. Oh my word, the wall turned out incredible. Now it's time to start doing all of the really fun stuff, building our furniture and accessorizing it. Just, we've got all of the hard, heavy lifting out of the way, but set a beautiful foundation. Let's get doing this. Okay, we did it and it looks great, doesn't it? Okay, we've worked really hard on this room makeover and now it's time to share it with you. I'm just super thrilled with how this room makeover turned out. I love it. Okay, so attached to this was another bathroom that had an attachment to the hallway. I never really did anything in that bathroom. It was probably one of the items that I would have maybe got to. It's a decent bathroom, but it's just kind of a regular bathroom. <laughs> but the fact that he had one was pretty good in my opinion. When I was growing up, my whole family shared one bathroom. So in my opinion, he was just lucky to have a bathroom in the first place. <laughs> So there you go. <laughs> so this bathroom was one that got a lot of views as well as far as the makeover was concerned. Now, if you remember, I did kind of a peel and stick wallpaper on the wall. I had a lot of questions on how that held up over time. And what I can tell you is I believe I made over this room two and a half, maybe three years ago. I'm not exactly sure but the wallpaper is in perfect condition. I'm planning on leaving it up for the, the tenants, but it is something that could easily be peeled back and removed 
if we want to down the road and at the same time has held up. So let's take a quick peek back at what we did in this room. This bathroom is boring. It is so vanilla. There's really nothing exciting going on with it, but with a few very strategic changes, we can really make it look spectacular. The first thing we're gonna do is start with a little bit of demo. move on to the vanity. I want to kind of replicate what we've done in my last bathroom renovation and kind of give it like a shiplap look. We are going to go rip down some of this masonite into strips and we're going to kind of fill in the side and the door fronts. So we are ready to address this. The first thing we're gonna do is remove all of the hardware. So we made these a little narrow, but I think we can still make it work. We're just gonna have to space them out strategically. And we're gonna use some really heavy duty construction adhesive. drying on our cabinet um, prior to painting, I wanted to do something to this light fixture. I also spray paint some extra hardware I had left over from another project. Our paint has dried overnight. I rehang the cabinet doors and add our gold hardware. I believe hardware is the jewelry of the room and I just love this. Next, I hang a gold mirror that I picked up from Ikea. This hack makes such quick work of it. Then it was time for some shelves that I pulled out of my scrap pile. And they were just the perfect size at 10 inches by 18 inches. And I make sure that they are nice and level once they're screwed down. And now it's time for all of the finishing details, light at the end of the tunnel. worked really hard and now it's time for the reveal so let's go in. with this bathroom renovation. It turned out so good. I shopped my house. I was very smart about the decisions that I made. I used scrap wood where I could and it all came together 
for around $300. Okay, so here's one room you never really saw, and that was because it was my husband's office. We just never got around to it. He bent his clubs in this room and did a lot of work in this room, but we never did get around to doing a makeover on it. It's like a 10 by 10 regular bedroom with butter yellow walls. I do have plans to just paint it out in a Revere pewter that kind of throughout the rest of the house, but yeah. That's what we have for here. <laughs> There's nothing really to see. So here's that brick again. We did the same thing in this bedroom as we did down in the bathroom. This was supposed to be kind of a boys room, like a locker room feel, and it was so much fun to do this for my son. And so let's take a quick peek back at what this looked like, what I did to it, and all the fun. <laughs> this is my boys bedroom, raw in everyday life. I did not clean it up. Now I haven't really done anything in here other than a couple of DIYs that you may recognize from the past. The first thing we need to do is kind of clear out all of the stuff and get it out of the way um, so that we can start a break. Now we have this blank slate and never have you ever seen a more vanilla room. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rip out the baseboard here because my sheet of brick paneling is as tall as this room is. Before we install it, I'm going to hit each side of the corners with some paint. Let's get working. putty was a little heavy so I went over it with a sander and sanded a lot of it off real quick it didn't take me more than 20 minutes to do the whole wall and then we sealed it with a matte sealer while the sealer on the brick was drying I went ahead and painted all of the other walls in a Revere pewter the fresh coat of paint makes it feel so much more alive in here created these little initial signs and now we're ready to hang it up on the wall. Then above it, I cut these really cool kind of pulley lights so we can kind of adjust the height of them. We will just hang that centered above and it's gonna be fun, I, I like it. My boys really love football and I got these pictures off of Wayfair. I'm so excited to hang them. I think they're really gonna love them. I keep saying this, but this room is also one of my favorites in the house. It really saw a massive transformation over the time that we lived here. It started out as the most boring vanilla bedroom you have ever seen. Oh my goodness, it was just so boring. And now we have this beautiful wall treatment, the grid pattern, and we have a built-in fireplace here as well. It actually started 
out as kind of like a renter friendly fireplace that could move and I eventually and ultimately built it into the wall with an over mantle that kind of mimicked the look that what is downstairs that's the one thing about design is you really want to keep things consistent and so there is a very consistent look throughout the home and you'll see the items repeated and redone so let's just take a quick look back at what it used to look like and where I took it it started as a very bland a very boring bedroom you couldn't get more boring really than it was before the first thing we need to do is kind of clear out some of the old stuff make room I'm getting rid of the bed now it's time to clear everything out remove everything on this wall we're gonna remove the drapery and get it prepped for our wall treatment I'm excited let's do this not your plan but now the days of silence we could go till we're older put your head on my shoulder all right i got everything cleaned out and i am ready to go ahead and start doing our accent wall the first thing we're gonna do is remove this back baseboard and then we will start hanging our masonite We've covered up all of the seams and I'm just gonna kind of set this here. Awesome is this wall. I am so excited. Now the next part is super important. Do not skip out or skimp on this step. We need to putty and like caulk every seam, every nail head. And then when it's dry, we're going to prime. And then we're gonna paint two coats of Sherwin-Williams Extra White in semi-gloss. And when we're done, it looks so good, am I right? Now it's time to set up our beautiful new big girl bed. It's absolutely gorgeous, I love it. It feels so good to be out of my grubbies. Clean. <laughs> But our room is in a good spot. We've got the bed installed and we're about ready to do kind of all the fun stuff, all of the finishing details that is really gonna make this bedroom beautiful. I'm just gonna kind of mix and match some stuff. I've got a palette together that I think is gonna be really yummy and really divine. <laughs> Just a few final finishing touches and this master bedroom makeover will be complete. I have been wanting to do in here for a long time is doing an over mantle on this portable renter friendly fireplace. I think now might be the time to just go ahead and build it in. I want to do an over mantle. Also, my nightstands are looking a little shabby. They are mirrored and like most mirrored nightstands, they've started to crack. Let's get started right with a big piece and that is the fireplace over mantle. So we're gonna go outside, build the over mantle and let's get going. We're gonna nail in both side pieces and then the middle piece and then we'll put on the top plate. So it's like base, one, two, three, and then top plate, very simple framing. Super easy, we got this. 
So I've got this sheet left over from my son's um, bedroom makeover. So what I'm gonna have to do is cut this in half and then like still like a little section um, from the extra and piece it together and hope that it looks good. I think it'll be fine, but we're gonna try to make this work. So here's where we're at with this. So what I ended up doing is I cut back the pad. So it's gonna sit barely right underneath the pressure of the fireplace. I made sure that the tack strip is cut back past this point so that it doesn't um, inhibit our ability to push it down. gonna move on to the nightstand. These pieces that I got, uh, the nightstands and the dresser, they are from Lexington Furniture. A nightstand there is between $1,500 and $2,500 a piece. I paid about $165 for each nightstand, which was an incredible deal. They were in fantastic shape. And on the nightstands, what I did is I took them outside and I used a sprayer to prime and paint them. And they were looking so nice that I decided to go back and get the matching dresser. I ended up going ahead and painting it here in the room, primed it, painted it. And I will tell you, if you use the sprayer, you are going to get a much prettier finish. And now we are to where we are. And so here is what we're looking like today. And let's start with a fireplace because this over mantle, it has been a project that I have been wanting to do forever. I knew that I wanted to do kind of like a miniature version of what I had downstairs. And now this is fully built in. It's got the over mantle. Okay, so we are in my master bathroom and we did some really fun projects in here as well. I think they're all kind of fun, but we did everything from making a simple bathroom tub shelf <laughs> to recreating the cabinet doors and doing this whole area up top, which was a lot of fun. So let's take a quick look back at that. One thing I want you to take notice is I ended up putting the original mirrors in here because I wanted to take the more decorative ones that I ended up going with to the new house and use them there. So I put these ones back in. They are still super cute and I love it. So let's take a look back at that. So I've come up with a plan. This is it but it has like a center console unit. What I'm gonna end up doing is I am going to leave the sinks alone, but we are going to move the lights slightly to center over a mirror, but our sinks will be slightly off center. So my plan is, is to put in a granite ledge right here. But the problem is, is then that will prevent me from pulling like the sink 
plugs up and we're gonna have a sink stopper that is like a pop-up so all you have to do is like push it down and pop it up right from here and you don't have to lift this up and then that's not impeded we're gonna clean and get ready for paint on the walls we've got to remove some stuff off the walls painting we're gonna paint the bulk of the room I am gonna stop right about here because I'm not gonna need to paint behind the vanity yet because we've got a little treatment that we're gonna be doing there so let's get it on the wall Absolutely love it. Look at this. It's actually not that much different, but it makes all the difference in the world. Love it. Okay, so we got our granite installed. It is super solid. It was installed with 100% silicone. It has a 50 year warranty, so it's not going anywhere. Before we install our shiplap backsplash that we shall go all the way up to the ceiling, we need to adjust our light fixtures to compensate for the little middle tower and center over the new mirrors. And so I've turned off the power and I'm just gonna move the electrical over just enough that it will be in its new spot. And then we'll install our shiplap. One more drink to swallow it down. I gotta get you out of my mind. I've been out to late shifting beds trying to kill the image of you. Got on you down time and time again It wasn't my intention Maybe we should have been friends So easy So here's where we're at. We installed our shiplap on the back. We got it around our light fixtures. That was a little tricky. We are finally to the part that has had me so excited this whole time, and that is the center console area. So we are gonna go outside, get powerful, and build that ourselves, and I'm gonna show you what we do out there. That's all right. It was cold. Said we loved one another. Guess that we were wrong. I met you in the summer. I okay, so we've worked really hard. We built our carcass of our cabinet, and now we're gonna attach it to the wall. So we'll just install it, trim everything out, and then we'll prime and paint everything that needs that. So I can't wait. We're making good progress. <laughs> Okay, so I wanna put crown molding up on top. So we're gonna take this decorative molding that I found and then we're gonna stack it with a quarter round like this and it's gonna give us the illusion of crown molding without all the math. So that's what we're gonna do now. 
Okay, so that's our piece, and then we'll do the quarter round upstairs um, with our miter shears. So we are gonna attach this, and I've marked where it goes. So it's gonna, there's gonna be a little bit of a gap up here, but we're gonna close that with the quarter round. And so we're gonna just make sure this is lined up, and we will nail it into place. Okay, so here's where we're at. The door fits, it looks great. It's obviously not hung yet. So now we're gonna just prime all the unfinished wood parts and then we will start painting. It's looking really good. Now it's time to hang our cabinet door and then we get to do all of the really fun stuff, the final touches. I'm so excited. If you haven't seen my new home yet, there are gonna be so many projects to do there as well. And you can check it out right here. To all of my DIY goddesses, you are more powerful than you know. See you next time, bye.